what we saw last week when there was a rumor that BlackRock's uh, ETF had been approved and you saw Bitcoin run, just jump in price. Uh, it, it was about 10%, I think, in, in a matter of minutes, right? So that in and of itself is an indication that there is pent up demand for this. I do believe that once we have the three main or four main ETFs approved, that the spot ETFs approved, that there's going to the, the the market value of Bitcoin could double very quickly. That would it would actually surprise me if we don't double or at least have some sort of major 50, 60, 70 percent move. Vailsha Capital Management's James Lavish gives us his update for the crypto market and why we're going to see a massive surge in price for Bitcoin very soon. Lavish explains that while speculators initially drive price movements, giants like BlackRock have entered the market and shifted the cycle by pushing prices to the increase we've seen just in the last week alone. He also points out that historical trends indicate a parabolic increase in market cap in the coming months. As we near the Bitcoin halving in March of 2024, Lavish provides insight into why, realistically, we could see a $70,000 price per Bitcoin by January. With real money now flowing in, he emphasizes that the crypto market has become more significant than ever, and institutional investors are driving the price of cryptocurrency that will yield massive gains in the next three months. Let's get right into the latest interview with James Lavish as he gives his prediction for Bitcoin and the crypto market. Don't forget to share your thoughts and comments down below. Let's get right into the video. Gary Gensler hasn't really had, uh, in my mind, uh, he hasn't had reasonable, uh, you know, um, defense for not allowing the spot Bitcoin ETF to be approved um, to, to this date. And so, um, but when you have large, massive players who have, um, you know, between the two of them, tens of trillions of dollars of assets between Bit, uh, between uh, BlackRock and and Fidelity. It's it, it's just a, it's it's tremendous pressure on them all to figure it out because it's saying that the people want this, investors want this, they want this easy version of Bitcoin for them to be able to buy and sell in their portfolios, and why it's so important is I've talked about this before is that like it's very difficult for small institutions and even some large institutions to to buy and own Bitcoin. It's it's a very large it's a it's a tall hurdle for them to get over in their in in their own operations, right? Because there are legal issues, there are settlement issues, there there you've got to who's going to uh, custody the Bitcoin? Where is it going to trade? How are they going to market? There's a lot of issues they have to work out, and it's easy for you or me to just go into Coinbase, buy some, put it in a wallet, no problem. But for an uh, institution, it's much, much, much more problematic, and it's a larger uh, question for them. So what does this ETF do? Well, it basically, it translates Bitcoin into the securities language that they already know and speak and they do business in every day. They can buy it on the New York Stock Exchange. They can settle it on the New York Stock Exchange. They can have their prime broker custody it and they can margin against it if they need to with cash. And it's all right there. It's not, there's no difference between that and owning a spider for them. And so that's what's, that's what's important. Um, and so it, it, that in and of itself will bring, in my opinion, a tremendous amount of liquidity into this asset. It becomes so easy to buy. What we saw last week when there was a rumor that BlackRock's uh, ETF had been approved and you saw Bit Bitcoin run, just jump in price, uh, it, it was about 10%, I think, in, in a matter of minutes, right? So that in and of itself is an indication that there is pent up demand for this and they know it. And so uh, even if it, if a lot of that was short covering, it, it's, it shows that we know that this is, this has been, uh, this is news that everybody's waiting on. I, I do not believe that this news is priced into the Bitcoin market yet. It's starting to get priced in today, as you saw, and I believe it will continue to do this. 
of course, it's going to react to what's going on in the, in the economy and market as well. It, it is still considered a risk asset for many holders. And so until we get through that period, it's hard to tell. But I do believe that once we have the three main or four main ETFs approved, that the spot ETFs approved, that there's going to the, the the market value of Bitcoin could double very quickly. And I don't think that that would be a, that would not be a surprise to me at all. That would it would actually surprise me if we don't double or at least have some sort of major 50, 60, 70 percent move on the actual approval of a number of those. What in the macroeconomic world could mute that? Oh, I do think it could mute it in a way. It depends on on what the what the economic situation actually is, right? So did we have a credit event like I was talking about that we have just this V-shaped sell-off and a recovery because the Fed and Treasury jump in to liquidate the market or uh, provide liquidity to the market? Uh, or is it something more along the lines of a long drawn out deep recession that just weighs on the economy for years and years, especially if we are still ex experiencing some uh, stagflation at the front end of that, that could be a problem. Uh, and so that could weigh on it. But that's a long that that's a longer term kind of uh, event that that it's 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 difficult to price out today, uh, but it could weigh on that top end of it for sure. So it really depends on what we're talking about. If we have a, a recession that's deep enough that your your unemployment jumps over 10, 15 percent, like if we have something that 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 would be like Great Depression kind of uh of event that would absolutely weigh on every asset. So whether it's 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 Bitcoin or it's stocks, it would be it would be difficult to uh, to that would be a very difficult environment to make money in. The ongoing adoption of Bitcoin by governments, institutions, and media signifies a broader recognition of its value. However, Lavish says this is just beginning. Comparing the initial years to the current widespread interest and investment with a giant spotlight on Bitcoin ETFs, he highlights this being a significant development in the financial ecosystem. He believes that BlackRock and Larry Fink will lead the charge in obtaining regulatory approval for a Bitcoin ETF. Lavish believes this will underscore Bitcoin's enduring relevance as an asset and its potential as a hedge against currency devaluation. We've seen problems with spot ETS for gold. And the problem is it's difficult to uh, audit the gold in their vaults and determine that the, that whoever is, is sponsoring that ETF holds enough gold that if you wanted to transfer your, your uh, certificate for the gold and take custody of the gold, we don't know that, uh, that we've seen their problems that they're, they're, it may or may not be there. It may have been rehypothecated. It may have been lent out. Now, the difference with a Bitcoin ETF, as long as it is clearly delineated this way, and 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 the the end of the 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 final ETF that is approved is shown that it will uh, be able to be audited simply and show exactly where these addresses of every single Bitcoin it owns is and that it hasn't been moved or rehypothecated that is sitting there exactly where in the wallets they say it is or in that uh, institutional custody they say it is then it's different that it won't have the same risk in my mind that you would with a a, a gold etf for instance now it said we all know as bitcoiners that there is nothing that beats buying and holding bitcoin in your own wallet and knowing the the address and your keys yourself there's nothing that trumps that as long as you keep hold of those keys you memorize them whatever you need to do that is the that is the only way that you can ensure 100 percent that your bitcoin won't disappear because in reality if you have an etf it's still somewhat of a paper market in that you have you have counterparties, you have BlackRock that's actually holding it, and you have to trust that BlackRock is holding it and that their custodian, if they're not self 
using self-custody or if they don't have insurance on it through Lloyd's of London or whatever it is, that it it is uh, there for you. So there's always that question, always. And right. you'll never be 100% sure. But I can tell you this, Michelle, if you're, if you're an institution and you're staring down the career risk of, hold, of buying and holding Bitcoin yourself in, some, in, in wallets that you've created with your internal process, that's going to be a much, much larger, taller hurdle to get over than just simply buying an ETF just like you would buy GLD. It's so much easier. It's, it, it, it will bring in money from that world that it's just not available right now. If you're a registered investment advisor, you you likely cannot do it for the base of your uh, of your investors. You have Christine Lagarde announcing the on ramp of CBDCs out in Europe, and so that that's not lost on either Mike or me, right? So the the significance of this statement is that Bitcoin is the exact opposite of a CBDC, and that's the real point of all of this in that. You, you've got fiat that's troubled, that we're seeing is troubled. You've got endless amounts of debt that are coming into the market that are making every single dollar currency out there, whether it's the yen or the euro or whatever it is, the, every sovereign that is, that, is printing their own, that is printing their own money and issuing their own debt, their, their currencies are becoming less valuable. You've got that problem. Then you've got the CBDC problem where you, you have the European Commission saying that they're going to issue, oh, it's just a digital currency. It's no different than what you've been using all along. That's a flat out lie. Of course it's different. And it's going to have, it's going to have restrictions for certain uses and, and for people in the future and that you will not be able to use your money freely. That's not freedom. When you expend your energy and you store that energy in the form of money, in order to use it later, that's freedom, as long as you can trust the money. But if you can't trust the money, then you can't trust the freedom. And I think that's the real crux of all of this. And that's the interesting part. And if, and if Larry really believes that, and he really understands that, then uh, you know, BlackRock, will that, they're in the position to bring Bitcoin to a much wider audience. And that's the key to the whole ETF. Lavish anticipates that the crypto summer will continue its parabolic run until June of 2024. As we stand on the edge of the winter months, the crypto market is poised for a meteoric surge in prices. He illustrates Bitcoin's current undervaluation, drawing in investors and enticing speculators eager to ride the waves of September's price fluctuations in pursuit of profits. His outlook is fueled by the impending wave of mass adoption, which he believes presents an unparalleled opportunity to get in on the action. Lavish sees the race toward a six-figure price target set to unfold in just under a year. What's more, he highlights the intriguing historical pattern of Bitcoin's value surging 10x with each halving event, hinting that 2024 could catapult Bitcoin to an unbelievable $100,000. What do you think about James Lavish's prediction for Bitcoin, the crypto market cap, and the institutional capital pouring into the space? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.